Okay, awesome. So um, I have actually a, a calendar that I have set up. So, um, and I, I know that there's quite a few leagues on Milo that are already using this um, method as well. So um, let's see if I can search for it on Google. Join Milo office hours. So this is a, a page that I've shared um, in our Google group. We've talked about this in one of our other office hours sessions. Um, and this is just the calendar so that it's easier to keep track of the upcoming office hours sessions. Um, but it, I also just want to show off this calendar. So this is an option um, any website owner has, um, regardless of if it's Milo or not, because you're just embedding using the HTML code. Um, you're embedding this calendar from Google Calendar. So um, we see folks use this um, often because it has the different week, month, and agenda views um, where you don't have that same flexibility with a Milo calendar. So um, to start out, you definitely need to start out with your Google Calendar account. So that address, um, you can go to calendar.google.com or you can always Google it. Um, just putting in Google Calendar or Calendar Google whatever um, into your search bar will get you there. And once we're here, um, I obviously see my current calendar that I have set up. Um, but if I was looking to start fresh, let me see if I can zoom in a little bit here. Okay. Um, if I'm starting fresh, I can start out with just creating a brand new um, calendar. And actually, what we'll do here is down here. So sorry, not on the create button. If you are trying to create an entirely new calendar, um, you will want to start down here with other calendars and click on the plus sign. So we can create new calendar or if for any reason you already have it existing somewhere, um, you can import it from these different methods, but we're just going to start with a brand new one that we're creating through Google Calendar. So we'll call this demo calendar. And I wonder, I'll just add description here so we can see if it does pop up anywhere because I am not entirely sure. So I'll go ahead and create calendar. Um, it does list myself as the owner um, and that will become important um, so that your calendar remains visible. Um, and we'll, we'll go over that in a little bit. So I'll create calendar. And obviously, if you're already working with a calendar that exists, you would just go straight um, to view the settings for my calendar. Um, I'm jumping over some steps of where you would create events and you know manage your calendar uh, to, to populate it with uh, different things. Um, I'm skipping those steps for now. I'm just going to go straight to once you're ready to embed it and add it to your website. So um, you've, you've created a new calendar or you're working with a calendar that already exists. Um, and so if you're starting out on this page, um, you just click on the three dots and we go to settings and sharing. And that gets us to the same place that we just were. Um, so coming on down, we want to and actually you can scroll through the middle or you can scroll down here. Um, and we want to go to integrate calendar. Um, there's a specific embed code section. So once you click your mouse anywhere into there, it's gonna select the whole thing. And we just copy that thing to our clipboard. Another way that you can share this calendar is by the URL. So if you don't want it to show up um, immediately, like how we see here, where you know we reach the page and bam, it's right there. If you wanted it to be a link instead, then you can um, use the public URL to this calendar instead. But we want to embed. Um, and actually, what we can do too is customize this embed code. Um, let's go ahead and open that up. 
by default, the width is set to 800. So that's pretty good for um, our Milo sites being that that is the um, max width of our you know, viewable area. Um, but aside from, from that, you can toggle the calendar title. Um, the calendar title by default is what you named it when you were creating it. But if you change the calendar title here, then we see it change on the display of the embedded calendar. Um, we can toggle the display on and off of different things. Um, the title, I believe the navigation buttons allow you to go through the different days or months. Um, date, I guess it's just the month. But yeah, you can play around with these different things. Um, and the time zone displays down at the bottom and it's your, um, what your time zone is. So connected to your Gmail account or your Google account, you have set up certain settings in that account and um, it's recognizing it from there. So if, if you're using this amongst your local league or state league, it's probably not that big of a deal because most of you will probably be in the same time zone. Um, but we see that with our Milo, um, you know, office, office hours calendar, we're obviously all on different um, time zones. And then um, additional stuff that you can change, um, you know, uh, the view itself, the week, how it's going to show up. Um, oh, and you can actually toggle the time zone. So if it is different than your own settings, that's nice to be able to change that. Um, and then down here, you can add other calendars that you have already in your Google account so that they display as well. Um, otherwise, it looks like, I'm not sure what the default grab is because I was just editing the demo calendar, but it did also give me my office hours calendar by default. So that might just be something to keep an eye out for um, so that you're not having either too little or too much information. Once you're done customizing on the left-hand side, then we could just click this little copy icon and it copies the customized embed code to our um, clipboard. And I'm just gonna play around with the demo site. Um, so now that I copied the embed code to my clipboard, now I need to come over to my Milo site. Um, if you're looking to add it to your Milo site, I would recommend not using the default calendar page. Um, this one here where you have the upcoming events at the top, your header section is there, and then the Milo uh, created events are listed below. I would suggest not using this. You can um, turn this off from the menu for the time being if you are looking to use the Google Calendar only. Um, if you wanted to use both of them, and we've, and we've seen that as well, just make a separate page. Um, and and it, it would have to be titled something other than calendar because in the Milo system, the title of a piece of content controls the URL. Um, so you could call it events or monthly calendar, something that's just different from simply calendar. So I'm going to add a completely new page. Uh, I'm just gonna add a simple page. Uh, just because I, I don't need it to list as an article, event, or anything like that. So I'll call it monthly calendar. And going straight to the body, um, there's two different ways I can go about it. If I wanted to add it to the body, I would need to change this to full HTML first um, so that the HTML can be read properly. Or if I want to make it easier on myself, let's say I'm coming into this, the body set to WYSIWYG, I can skip the body and just add a third party embed code box. Um, it will not, it will display at the top of the page still, um, being that the body is empty. So I can come down to this new little box I added. I don't have to make any change to the text editor, but I just have to replace the text that's there and we can paste as plain text or paste regular. And there I, I 
didn't have to um, swap between the HTML. But one thing to note with that method or, or this way of doing it would be if you do start to add to the body, then it pushes the Google Calendar a little bit further down the page each time you add to the body. Um, but for now, because I don't have anything in the body, we're going to see it at the top of the page. I'm going to go ahead and save. This is my demo sites, and we'll just save that as a draft. OK, so here we have the display. Um, definitely don't have any any events added there, um, but it as far as the implementation of it, like adding it to your site, it's pretty straightforward. Um, let's go ahead and add an event because I do believe it updates um, with the, you don't you don't have to change the code each time. So if I come back to my actual calendar, I'm going to create an event. Let's see. OK, on the demo calendar. Perfect. So demo event series. Let's see, does it allow me to repeat? There we go. We'll just repeat it daily for one week. OK, so coming back over to my monthly calendar page, I should hopefully see that once I refresh. Yeah. Oh, that went longer than for a week, but um, you get the idea there. And Maurice, mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Did, so you just went to the calendar. You were still in the website. You didn't go back to your own accounts for your Google calendars. I did go back to my own uh, Google account. So that's what I thought. OK, to add the event. Yeah. Clicking on to this tab. This okay. is a Google Calendar. OK, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And so if you went with this option, it would all be managed through Google Calendar. The only time that you would interact with your Milo site would be to get the embed code in there for this Google Calendar. If after that, if you want to make any changes to this Google Calendar, you'll come to your um, calendar.google.com. And you also said something about adding um, something in the body. What, what would you be adding in the body? Oh, yeah. So um, let me see. Can I open back the join office hours? So um, like adding a description at the top, like that's how I have it set up here, I believe. Um, I believe okay. that this whole section is set up in the body and then I just added a third party embed code box for this. Okay. So it kind of stays there. It's not something that really changes very much, probably. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, Thank you. It, it definitely could change, but it's just the fact of knowing that the body will Makes it go push. down further. Yeah. yeah, exactly. As long as you keep adding to the body and making it bigger, then that the other boxes or paragraph boxes below go lower and lower. Any other questions? Uh, Amaris? Uh-huh. Um, I was a little confused when you, um, when you very first started to select all those options for, okay. so you went back to, um, uh, let's see, integrate calendar and the embed code, where did you go to that page? So you're okay. on, in your Google Calendar and, you, and you've decided that you you would like to create this demo calendar. And then there were some options. So where did you, how did you click that? So when you are um, starting out with creating a brand new calendar, it uh -huh. did fit me to that page. So it took me directly there. Let's just create one. Oh, okay. Um, and just call it demo. As soon as I click create calendar, it takes me Let's see if it does it again. It should take me to the settings for that calendar. I guess it didn't. So, um, OK, it didn't do it automatically, but all we need to do is click on that calendar. On that, I'll select that calendar. OK. All right. um, and then the other way, if you're starting out with a calendar that already exists, then um, you would start out on this page where you're viewing it. Click on the three dots that give you options for demo or options for that calendar. 
um, and it's settings and sharing. Okay. I think that you can also get to it through this cog. If you click on settings, let me double check. Well, that's another way to get, and then you would have to click here. So multiple ways to get there. Um, but yeah, so once you get to the, the settings, um, you have integrate, integrate calendar here off to the left, or you can just scroll down the page until you see that heading. It's the same. This is just a, a quick outline way of getting there. Um, but integrate calendar and the embed code is here right underneath integrate. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. And then that customize button is there. Um, the default you know, display of it is not bad, but uh, just know that you can tweak some things there. Oh, and then I did want to show off, because um, I, I don't know uh, how many of you remember when I was first trying to show this uh, Google Calendar and share it with you all, um, you were letting me know that you weren't able to see the events or that it was saying something like, uh, no, permission is not allowed or something. So um, if that happens to you where you yourself are able to see your calendar, but folks are reporting that they can't, um, they don't have the proper permissions or they just aren't seeing it the way you are. Uh, it could have to do with your main calendar's permissions. So the way I have my calendar set up, essentially my Amaris LeBron calendar is my main calendar. Um, if you're just working with one calendar, you don't have to worry about this. It really only affects if um, you have created additional calendars. Um, because what I ended up having to do was um, go to the settings for the Amaris LeBron calendar and under access permissions for events, I had to make it available to public. So um, I believe that this setting off to the right, see all event details is set by default. But um, yeah, we definitely, if you're working with the same setup of calendars as I am here, you want to edit your main calendar to make it public to, or make it available to the public. What was the part about iCal in the, when you were, that when you were- the, the integrate, um, I think? Yes, under integrate. Um, secret address in iCal format. It says, use this address to access this calendar from other applications without making it public. I'm not sure exactly what that means. Let's see what the read more gives us. It might just say <coughs> why and why not. Oh, okay, you can get your Google Calendar events with other computer applications like Outlook. So maybe you can have it on your um, iPhone calendar or uh, you know Apple calendar. It's maybe a way to convert the event to that um, type of program. What was the one above it? There was one with iCal also, something about an address. Oh yeah, Publicly. so it looks like use this address to access this calendar from other applications. Um, let me do that with the office hours one and I'm gonna just throw it in the chat if you have, whoops. If you have an Apple device, I think it should do something there. Um, it will most likely try to download the uh, event or possibly calendar, um, or you may be, be able to view it from your device and see all the events. I think that's, that, yeah, the ICS is a, a, a format. At the end of that is .ics. I think that's a format for a iCal calendar. Okay. And that's that's the Apple version of calendar, correct? The yes. iCal? Okay. Yeah. So do we need to set that so that people on their iPhones can or iPads can see our calendar? Not so that they can see it, because it will. If you're embedding it, it will be visible to all types of users, um, okay. regardless of their device. This uh, is just the um, like the similar option up here of public URL, but um, rather than 
this uh, option is for a web browser um, as a, and, and the iCal format is for pretty much Apple applications. So oh. that's where they differ. It's just the program that is going to be used to view these things. Um, and I myself haven't tried this, so I, I'm kind of taking a guess as to what it will do once you access it on your Apple device. Um, but I'm pretty sure that 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 is the difference. It's going to pull up some application in your Apple device to try to view this. It, so says, it, it says, do you want to allow downloads on calendar.google.com? You can change which websites can download files and websites preferences. This is okay, when I was so using I, the browser. Okay. I think that um, it's attempting to download the calendar's events to your calendar. I believe that that is, that's oh. what happens with this URL. It may be going through the web at first just to, to get that download going. Um, so that's another way, I guess, for folks to subscribe. That would be a, a good way to describe it, I think. Um, because it's just adding the events to your calendar. So we oh, should probably set that up then. Yeah, if you if if that is um, if you want folks to to have it available to to have um, in their device, then you can always have an explanation of what this is for and provide both of those. Um, because then this public URL to this calendar, let's double check. I think it's just going to display it on its own. Okay, so this is not really a subscribe option. This is so that they can view it in a different window. But then the iCal um, format is is more of like subscribing so that they add it to their own Apple calendar. So if we were doing a newsletter and we want to have an article about the calendar, we could use that public URL to this calendar mm -hmm. and people could click on it and they'd get to the calendar. Mm -hmm. OK, thank you. Yeah. But if you're displaying it already, they, they may not, you know, they can just look there. But if it's if already embedded it, somewhere. Yeah, right. Well, it'll be embedded on the website, but I'm talking about they're reading the newsletter. Oh, we have, oh, we have a calendar now. Let me click it. Let me see what it looks like from the newsletter. That's what I meant. Oh, I, wouldn't that be a different URL? It would be a different one, but you oh. could also link. So, sorry, well, it, wouldn't, it, it would be this one, the public URL to this calendar. Yeah. Um, but like Liz is saying, I believe she's saying like, if you have it embedded somewhere in your site, you could just provide the link to the page where you have it embedded. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, I see. Of course. Of course. Thank you. Yeah. But you have both options. More available. trouble for me, but yeah. Okay. This one. Uh, <laughs> well, not really, actually. Well, and the, the difference too, is that if you use the public URL to this calendar, it's full size. So it's across the whole screen rather than just the smaller 800 by 600. Oh, well, that's interesting. Yeah. So a few differences, um, but yeah, you have both options. So Maurice, if we want to set up the iCal, what do we paste into that public address in iCal format? I'm sorry, if you- If we, if we do want to set up the iCal option, mm -hmm. what do we paste into that, into that gray box? It would just be copying this whole address um, and you could add it. Let's see if I can add it here. Because my, my thinking is that you probably want to add some context to it to give them an explanation of what they can do with this. Um, we'll just add it to the body. So first, use this link to download all events from this calendar. To your your personal calendar. Your iCal. Yeah, it's yeah. Personal <laughs> iCal. OK. You might so want now, to say for, for Apple users or something. Yeah. <clears throat> for Apple users only. Okay, so I'm highlighting my just I want to put the link um, in the word link. And I am whoops, going to paste. And we'll insert. Um, 
Oh, let me get rid of that little extra line. Okay. Let's go ahead and save that. Um, it is a draft, so it won't be available to everybody. Let me go ahead and just apply. Um, in case any of you want to see if uh, you can see those changes um, live, I, I dropped the link to that page. Um, and while while we're getting through that, I see that Barbara had a couple of questions. Do folks see their own Google Calendar in addition to the lead calendar? Um, but others do not see my calendar, only I see that, correct? So it depends on um, your site's permissions. Like if it's made public or still made private, that um, at, we'd want to tackle first. But um, as far as if it is public, then others will see your calendar and I, I'm assuming I'm getting to the second question first the calendar that you're referring to Barbara I'm assuming is the Milo calendar um so as long as your site is public then your Milo calendar is public um if you are looking at the Google calendar let's say we're looking at one that is embedded um folks will not see their own Google Calendar in addition to the calendar that's embedded. Um, the one that is embedded is coming from your own uh, Google account. And so um, it's not, there's no connection between your account and whoever the viewers uh, is. It says, I have my own Google Calendar showing my events. Some members say they are seeing their events. Somebody said that a couple weeks ago, too, I think. Seeing their own events? Yeah. Hmm. I, but I don't believe so, because the, the, the embed code is specific to your account. Yeah. Um, and Hi. so. So I've been trying to, I've had Google Calendar forever. And then some people are saying, well, they're seeing their stuff. And I go like, well, just click off all those boxes where it says Milo or Google or whatever. Click those off. But they're like confused on this. So it's their computer that's doing it, right? Are they seeing are they seeing your personal events or they're seeing their own events? Angie, where are you? Help out on this because you're the one that was saying this. So Angie. Um, I think it works fine. She thinks it doesn't. Because I, I've no, had it because uh, everyone I've talked to, when they click on the link in our um, website, they get their own personal calendar. Which they will, unless they click off on those boxes. Right. If they're going no, to I, the Google I, Calendar. I, let's see if I can visit. Um, to, yeah, let's please go to. The added one would be just us, but if they go straight to Google, it'll be whatever calendars they have turned on, right? Yeah, so how is it that they're getting to the calendar to view the calendar? Are they going to a page on your Milo site or are they going to calendar.google.com? They're going to uh, they're going to members only on our site. Okay. Okay members only and then where where do they reach the google calendar oh i'm sorry i'm wrong you have to go to calendar it's not oh, okay. members only whoops calendar okay, okay so right there so this is not specific enough um this is just going to take them to their own calendar aha uh -huh. So just like we were looking at the um, the options and the settings for each calendar, go to the settings for whichever calendar you're trying to display, and then go to integrate calendar, and use that public URL to this calendar um, instead of this. So it's going to be a lot longer, but um, just know that <coughs> you, can, you can change the look of this link. So I won't save it, but just to show it off, um, let's, I'm just going to click my cursor anywhere inside of that link 
and then type in what I want. And once I, I'm, I've typed in everything that I like, I can either highlight and delete or backspace or just remove character by character. And so um, that'll be something that you might want to do because this link will be pretty freaking long. Um, let's just see what it looks like. Yeah, it, it, it'll be something similar because it'll be your own uh, address and then whatever your time zone is. Um, and I'll click back out of that. Okay, while you're in my, uh, my site, I have a real quick question. Could you <laughs> hover over um, uh, observer advocacy? Mm -hmm. now, actually, I guess you have to click on it. Okay. And you'll notice that I have links under advocacy, you know, contact your legislators and redistricting news. Mm -hmm. I, I want to make those visible. So okay. That's yeah, we, we do have um, a way to do that. I'll do it first with contact your legislators. Okay. We are working on a, oh, okay. That one looks like it stays. Maybe the redistricting news and actions that you can take. Okay, so let me just, uh, I think I was confused. Are you, do you want them to remain displaying like when I click out of advocacy? I want them to be seen from the home page. Okay, so from anywhere you want them to remain visible. Yeah, just like okay. about, about you can see what's underneath there. I okay, want perfect. Any, all the links to be seen. Okay, that's a little bit different than I was thinking, but it's definitely doable. So um, we wanna get to the menu. So either start out with manage menu or when you hover over the menu from any page, you can use the little cog. Um, and once you do that, you'll you'll click on list links, um, not edit menu, list links. So either way, get to this page. Um, and we want to edit the parent link. So that's advocacy. Right. So we edit that. Um, and then unknown caller. Um, and for this, we want to show as expanded. So just check that box and it does give you a little explanation. If this menu uh, link has children, the menu will always appear expanded. Great, that's what I was been looking for. Awesome, I'll go ahead and save it because um, we're already yeah. there. And we can check it out. It should spit us back out to, oh, well, I'll get to the homepage from here and there we go. And Amory, I have a related question to that. Yeah. So um, I had I I did that. I made my things look. I think it's under getting involved. But um, one of the three items is um, our redistricting, and I've, we're kind of still going through it. But I thought, oh, do I really need it to be showing? Is there any way? Is it all or nothing? As far as the um, like the if child three, links, if, if I had three items under advocacy and I only wanted two to show on the um, the page when you're uh, you know looking at it, like in other words, if she didn't want to have contact your legislators, but she wanted to have redistricting, I, I can't remember. Did you individually click those? Um, it, it is I just controlled remember. by the parent. If you want to have so them, so it's, 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 it's either no, or it's either none or all that's right that's um question was. Okay. i think i think if if you're trying to get at what you were explaining um if you want some to display in the menu but not all maybe um you add them to the page so you could add links to the page itself rather than them being in the menu that yeah, might be okay. a, a workaround um yeah. i may do that eventually i don't know but thank you okay yeah that was one of my questions yeah any other questions? I think, and, and please do chirp up if I did, if I missed anything in the chat. I feel that we've gone through um, or caught up on that. Uh, um, you mean questions beyond the calendar? I, I just wanted to make a comment about uh -huh. the calendar. Mm -hmm. it, it seems to me that when I put it in my, uh, in our league's website, that I played around with the height and width. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, to make it so that it, it 
it stayed, you know, longer, even though it got narrower, <laughs> depending on the size of the window, and also the, the type of uh, uh, device that was being used. So did you want to cover anything about that? Ah, well, um, as far as, let's see, the customizations um, that Maddie's getting at, you definitely can make it longer. Um, the width, we the max would be 800 for our desktop um, view here in Milo. Um, but what we can do too is we can check as we're on a desktop to see what it looks like on a mobile device or easy, much easier, we could probably just pull out our mobile device and pull up the page. Um, but we just want to check it out to make sure it's going to look good for all users. So um, if you're on this desktop and you want to look at it through a, a mobile device's view, you right click and hit inspect. This brings up the web developer tools. Um, and here up in the top right, and I'm on Google Chrome. So um, for different browsers, it might be a like a different placement of these buttons, but you should have about the same options. Um, so these options here, whoops, this one uh, with the little, what it looks like a tablet uh, standing behind a, a mobile phone, click on that. And what that does is toggles this um, device toolbar. So you may have it turned off uh, by default to so just turn it on, or if it's already on, then you're good to go. Um, what we want to do here is where it says dimensions and whatever it reads, um, we're going to click on that and it gives us different options. Um, again, different browsers might give you different options for devices, um, but we have different iPhones, a Pixel, a couple different Samsung Galaxy, iPads, uh, Surface um, kind of tablets, uh, Galaxy Fold. A, a bunch of different items. And it looks like if you click on edit, I believe there's additional items you could choose from. Um, but if we click on one, let's use the iPhone XR, um, we see that the calendar does resize a bit, um, but it, as we can see, is a, a little bit um, large for the device. Um, for all of the devices that can rotate, it does give us the rotate option. So you see it in landscape and portrait mode. Mm. Um, so if you have a calendar that is just too big for mobile devices uh, and you'd like it to do a better job of shrinking and growing to the exact device, um, I'm gonna go ahead and close these web developer tools. What you can do um, with your embed code before you put it into your Milo site is make it um, responsive. So I'm going to open a, another page here. It's called embed responsively, and I'll drop this in the chat. Um, so what responsive means is that the it is going to be responding to the device um, that it's being viewed on. So the dimensions would be um, changing in response to what the device's size is or the screen size is. Um, so when we get to embed responsively, we have, I believe, more or actually, sorry, I'm just going to double check. OK, so oops, coming back over to embed responsively, um, it's generic iframe. So that's the um, media source that we choose. Uh, because that is the type of embed code that Google Calendar uses. So coming back over to my Google Calendar, um, I can copy from here or I could have just copied directly from my Milo page. But either way, I'm copying so that I can paste it into my embed responsively page. And once I click embed, it looks essentially the same to me. Um, but it will change as we see it on different devices. So I'm going to copy this embed code. And just as we did before, go to my Milo site. Uh, let me switch back here. Uh, 
Okay, now we will work working with the demo site. And I want to go back to our, whoops, monthly calendar page. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to edit that. There we go. And so now going down to the body with embed code, I'm just going to add it underneath so we can see both rather than replacing it. There we go. Was that the additional? Uh, this one here, yeah, I, I clicked on, or it was the add third party, third party embed code. I accidentally oh, clicked it again. Oh, I, thought you, I thought you did that before, okay. I'm adding a second one. Right. That okay. added a third. Okay, so on this second one that I added, uh, if, if I were going to um, actually use this page, I would replace the existing calendar. But just for the demonstration, I just want to add it underneath. So now we have a responsive version that's going to display right under. So let's go ahead and just save this. Um, the biggest difference, we probably won't see it on the regular desktop view. Um, hmm. Let's double check that that is working properly because it's it looks like it's possibly taking up space on the page, but not showing up as expected. No, I think that that looks all good. Hmm, it could possibly be an issue that Google Calendar won't work with embedresponsively.com, which is a shame if that's the case. No, okay. I'm not entirely sure what the issue was, oh, yeah. um, but all I did differently between the first save and the second save was publish. Um, but you probably, I would still recommend trying to save and draft if that's what you're wanting to do. Um, but in case that happens, try publishing and it, it might work, but okay. Um, we see a bit of a difference. Um, so the, the, the something different calendar here on top is a, displaying in a static size, um, for smaller mobile devices. It, will most likely shrink down some, but it's still going to be um, a static size. We see that this calendar down here is a little bit wider uh, because if you notice that the text up at the top, it's kind of aligned with that now. So let's see, can I put a, a straightish line kind of? <laughs> um, it, does a, it does a somewhat um, better job at trying to fit the window than the something different calendar does. So now let's do the um, inspect thing again. So we're going to right click and inspect, bring up the um, different view here. So I'm still looking at it in an iPhone. Let's just try an iPad. It's a bit different. Um, so I'm still in portrait mode on this iPad. We see that it has scrunched down the calendar somewhat. Um, when I go to landscape mode and I rotate the phone, it does grow some um, and it's, let's see if I can scroll to the side. It's actually a bit bigger than the default calendar. Yeah. Um, sticky size. So it looks like, whoops, it's not completely um, you know, following the, the same expectations. I'm trying a Surface Duo. I'm just trying different devices. Um, oh, and I toggled the dual screen mode. I'm going to go ahead and toggle that off. Uh, but let's see. Yeah, again, it's, it's scrunching down, um, somewhat. And if we flip the phone, it's doing, again, it's best to try to fit the window more than the calendar on top. So 
I'm going to go ahead and close those developer tools again. Um, definitely use with caution the embed responsively. Um, that embed responsively is available for any, well, not any embed code, but a lot of it, because a lot of embed code comes as iframes. Um, we often see our YouTube videos. And so um, this is something like the YouTube video. I don't know if we still have it embedded somewhere, but we did that before to add it like to the sidebar um, or to add it to your main page. And it's again, not gonna show up as a big, huge thumbnail for a mobile device user. So Amaris, uh -huh. um, I don't remember exactly how I did it with mine, but what I did was I made it so that the um, width would vary depending on the device or the size of the window, but I kept the height of the cells the same. Okay. So, I, I think of, I don't know if you can see this. I think I know what you're talking about. So, um, thanks for bringing that up, Maddie. Because it, if this is the case, then it would uh, prevent the need for embedresponsively.com. Okay. So, um, we're going back to the Google Calendar um, under Integrate Calendar, and under the embed code, I'm going to customize. So, I believe Maddie, I can just add a hundred percent. I can yeah. add a percentage. Is that the case? I, I think that that's what I did. And then okay. I also set it so that the height was fixed. The okay. width was a percent and the height was fixed. So let's try that. Oh, no. OK, <laughs> so I'm not going to give up just yet. We're going to leave that as 800 there. I think what we might have to do is change it ourselves, change it manually. So Google Calendar in the width and height is only accepting it by pixels. There's no other format you can enter, but let's copy this. I'm gonna go back to my monthly calendar and actually I can just uh, edit the embed code that I have here. Right. So um, we're gonna make a new draft and where the height displays in my embed code, I'm gonna change that number to 100%. So, or I'm sorry, not the height, the width. So here I have the embed code down here in the bottom. It has the width and it's in quotation marks. So we're going to preserve those quotation marks. We want 100, whoops, 100%. Um, and as Maddie said, we'll just leave the height fixed. Um, if we did change the height, you definitely don't. And if you were trying to change it to a percentage, you don't want it to be 100% because it's going to try to fill the person's screen. Um, but you might play around with, I don't know, something around 50% and below. I haven't tried that myself, but, um, I believe that it will still calculate like, uh, a smaller portion of the height of the screen, but okay. So I've changed the width to 100% rather than it being a fixed number. Let's go ahead and save that. Yay. Okay. So now they match. So that's telling us that, you know, it's, it's, it's responding um, this something different calendar now. So again, we're going to open up the inspect tool to really test it out. Yay. We already see a difference. So I left the um, devices surface duo. I think it's landscape. Oh, and look at that. And it changes as well when we, um, change it back to portrait mode. So yay, it looks it looks a lot better actually than the embed responsively version being that the height is, is right. Because because what happened was when it shrank, you couldn't see any of the events. And so that's why I wanted to keep the height uh, yeah. bigger, even if if the calendar was narrower. Yeah, no, that is that's really good because the embed responsively is scrunching it down or making it bigger all the way around. And then this um, other method of just changing the width is leaving the height um, as is. Thanks, Maddie. I, I'm, I'm now, it's all coming back to me now, remembering that we talked about this um, a few <laughs> sessions back. <laughs> awesome. 
Okay. I have a, I have a question about calendars. So um, our league has a, a Gmail account and a few of us are able, I guess, to use it. I mean, mm -hmm. it's info at, and I guess that's how we would create the calendar. That, um, that would probably be the, the, the easiest um, so that you all have access. So it's whoever has access to that Gmail address can go in and add a new event. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. And I will say um, that it doesn't even have to be a Gmail address. You can use an existing uh, email address. Like I have a LeBron at lwvc.org. Uh -huh. I've created that into a Google address or a Google account. So um, I'm going to use this window. Let's see. I think I have to start out with a, where I'm signed out. So I'm going to open a new browser, a Google browser where I'm signed out. And I'm going to see if I can sign in to Google. So when you're on the sign in screen, you have the create account button down here. When you click on that and you proceed to choose what it's for, um, you have this option, use my current email address instead, because by default, it's spitting out a Gmail address or it's asking you to create one. Mm -hmm. If you use your current address, then you type in whatever your current address is. But that would be if you were doing, you were, if you were the only one working with it, because that's, that's you. Right. Yeah. It, Nobody but else if, is going to use your email. If you have a, a league address, you can use that, especially if it's already existing and you don't want to have just another inbox um, on top of that, you can just um, use that same account information of your existing. And you uh, wouldn't have to be an administrator for Milo. No. Um, right. Yeah. You would only, they would only need access to the Google calendar if yeah. that was their task to, to edit for the site. Yeah. They would okay. not have to sign into Milo. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? I have questions, but it's not calendar. <laughs> I feel like we've we've done a, a pretty good job of wrapping up the calendar. <laughs> well, I'm the, I have lots of questions as usual, but I'll just ask the one that's the most on my mind. So it, it goes back to slideshow and trying to find a nice picture, um, you know, that I don't have to worry about, you know, what the, the line is going to look like. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. This having it mandatory is really an issue. You know, I've been trying to find a nice vote for one one. And so I guess I was going to ask, does anybody on this call have a nice vote for one one that, you know, there's nothing covering anything up? that I could add for my slideshow. <laughs> vote I, for one, can, is that the signs that we have? Those, those signs? I can open it. Because if I found one, I could just copy we it. we have one? Yeah, like a physical that. sign, or, or are you referring to like in it, the media well, library? Like a picture of the sign. <laughs> No, I, I don't want that. I want, I would like to have, you know, a nice one that the league has put out, but I, you know, it's, I've got one. What do I have now? I've got, what's well, kind of nice. It's a young black woman and it was just, it's on their new website and I use that, but you know, it's, it's funny looking cause it's covering up something. A little bit of the subject. Oh, of no, it. no, I, 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 that's a lie. I went back to use the one that uh, Amaris has with the uh, Scrabble. Oh, but uh -huh. even that, it looks funny, you know, and Amory's probably, you know, went and took the trouble of trying to change it all. I shouldn't have to do that. And so I guess this is, you know, first of all, asking, do we have to have, <laughs> you know, the uh, mandatory title um, or, you know, if we, anyway. Uh, and then secondly, does anyone have one on their website that I could, because I tried looking in the media library and even though I'm asking for vote 411, there's a lot of stuff that's not vote 411, so I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Am um, I making any sense? You, you just don't want the banner, right? You Hi, don't Jennifer. want the Yeah, because, but because it's, it's obliterating other text, but it's mandatory. And that was 
that was a really tough thing. Mary Jo and I, I know, worked I together on, on the couple know, of slides. So, so that's Is there I mean, a way to keep the banner off <laughs> the slideshow? No, but I, I've taken a note of that um, as, a, as a request um, because the, yeah, I made a note so that the title can be, uh, see if we can make it toggleable. Um, make it what? Like if it can be, the display can be toggled on or off. I'm oh, gonna right. um, yeah, check into the team yeah. about that. Um, but so getting to your original question, I wanted to first just search through the media library. I went to view all, or I went okay. to manage files and then I clicked on view all. Okay. I'm gonna search for vote 411 images. Okay. Um, and then the, my other thought too was checking the Flickr um, account for the National League. I would think that they have a, an album dedicated to Vote 411, but I'm not entirely sure. Um, so here we have different images. It looks like it's a lot of the logos. Um, so it, it, it's probably not what you're looking for. I'm going to now go over to the, I think it's lwvus.flickr.com, I think. Yeah, no. <laughs> I'm just going to Google it. LWVUS Flickr. Ah, okay. I was not even close. Okay. So here we have the photo stream um, and this is where you can download individual pictures just click on the picture and there we go in the bottom right corner we have the little download icon um, medium right click where, where do you see it on the right hand corner the bottom get, down here well let me get rid of my my gallery here and maybe I can see it. Oh, okay, download it. Okay, right. Mm -hmm. And once you click on that, you have this pop up. The medium would be the, the recommended size for a slideshow. Um, okay. that, the height, the uh, 534 gives you room to slide it up and down depending on if you need more visible space at the top of the image or if you need more visible space at the bottom. But when do I have to go into Canvas or whatever it is to, to do all that? Um, no, let's actually, let's use this picture. I'm going to add it to my demo site. That wouldn't be um, bad because I could see that if you did have a caption, you know, it would, it would not be obliterating anything. Yeah. Um, so one thing I'm actually going to do before I complete the download, um, the file name is really ugly. So I'm just going to copy what they titled this picture as, um, just to make my life easier. I don't have to come up with the title myself. So again, I'm going to go to download, download the medium version. And then all this gobbledygook, I'm gonna replace with the title, LW, LWV staff US capital. So we save that um, and let's come on back to my demo site. Okay, so let's create a brand new slideshow item. We'll just call this vote 411 and the slideshow image will upload now. Okay, and next, we'll leave that as public. And I'm just gonna leave the name as is. We'll let that display in the media library and Again, make my life easier. I'm using the title as the alt text. I could go a step further and make it um, a little clearer standing in front of. Um, the alt text is just, I, I always think of it as, think of it as you're describing the image right. to somebody no. who can't see it. Yeah, so exactly. just exactly. adding some more detail is, is helpful. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll call that modern image. Um, slideshow image, and there we go. I'll save. Okay, and then before I make any tweaks or, or changes to the the way the sh picture is going to show up, we'll just go ahead and save, publish it so that we can see it in the um, slideshow. Thank you. 
So we'll go straight to the home page. And it is the first one there. So, okay, by default, the um, the way that the image is cropped for the slideshow is just going to put the center, the crosshairs right in the center of the image. And the crosshairs are what determine what is the focal point. Um, so I definitely want to see a little bit more of the people in the image. So um, what I'm going to do is go and edit that slideshow. And I can actually edit the slideshow or I could edit the image, but um, we'll just go back in to edit the slideshow or the slideshow item. And here under slideshow image, I'm gonna click edit. This brings back up the, um, you know, the window where you uh, had settings after uploading. And under focal point, we have this little crosshair set right in the center. I want to drag that. If I drag it to the left or the right, depending on the width of the image, that might shift left or right as well. If it's uh, an 800 width uh, or 800 pixel width, it's not going to move left or right, but it will move up and down. Um, being that this original image is 800 width and 534 height, we'll, we'll see it move up and down, but not really left and right. So I've shifted it kind of down and right. Um, so let's go ahead and save this. It should tweak. But, but you can't see yourself. It does, you can't see right away what it's gonna look like. Correct, yeah, you cannot see it right away. You do have okay. to go through. Okay. Save that change and then you do have to publish once again. Okay. And then let's check that out on the home page. Oops. Okay. Home page. And there we go. So it's it it might have shifted a little bit to the right. Now I can't tell. <laughs> um, but it did oh, it, it shift. definitely changed. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that that crosshair is the focal point rather than cropping from the outside in you're yeah, okay. just telling where do you want the center to be yeah i've never i've never done that but um you know that's I, i'd like to just have the traditional fold 411 like this young the shorter person is showing but um but then they might actually have some yeah, better I'll, ones. I'll just i'll look again um yeah but, i'll but i'm gonna yeah. drop that in the chat okay I guess I didn't know about the, the flicker thing because it seems to me like when I, I guess I just usually right click and and then try to save it and I see it's all never saved as a PNG or whatever it is, but it sounds like if I use that. The download thing that I'll be able to save it as a picture, I guess. Yeah, just make because you make sure you're looking at the photo stream if you're looking at albums instead and you right click. Oh. Or oh. you, or you know, you have the download there. It's going to download the entire album rather than right. one photo. So yeah. just click through to photo stream. Or if you are starting out with the albums, click to open the album, and then click on the image itself. Yeah. Right. All right. Thank you. I, I'll try some more. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. But it doesn't mean we don't watch it because if you notice a lot of you know very nice images from the league. They already have like a banner underneath it. And so, <laughs> you know, like, anyway, even the one you've got on your demo, like I said, I've got that Scrabble one. That's, you know, <laughs> unless you worked with it, it would be a little bit obliterated. I don't remember. You must need, I, I don't remember what yours looked like. I just saw the Scrabble. <laughs> yeah, I'm not entirely sure. It is a little, a little um, cut off. <laughs> Yeah, that's like and, mine, okay. And while we're on this too, let's see if, I, I'm not gonna try to guess again. Um, our California League also has pictures. I know this is, might not be for everybody, okay. um, but I, I know that we have some generic images. Not everything is gonna be California specific. Um, uh -huh. So just okay. the, the one thing that we don't have is Vote 411. We have Voters Edge, which is California specific, but- Oh, that's uh, right, yeah. Yeah, we're having a special election, so I wanted to add, you know, something. Yeah, so, um, yeah, I would definitely That's recommend first the, the National League's Flickr because it looks like they have more, like, just um, generic. 
generic yeah and, right. and, and photos awesome. of people we have uh, kind of more graphics yeah so i just have to find one where i don't have to worry about something getting in the way <laughs> So, Amory, um, just to uh, confirm, there is a Flickr account for the national and there's a Flickr account for California. Yeah, two separate. Um, and let me, since I dropped the national one in there in the chat, here is the um, California League's um, Flickr URL as well. Huh. I haven't been on here in quite a while, so I'm like curious, okay, <laughs> to see the different albums we have. That's great. What awesome. a good service. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Well, I think um, right. thank you. We're gonna go ahead and wrap up today's session. As okay. always, thank you for a lively session. These these are super fun. And the more people we have, the more the more we can get into. Um, oh, I, want, I wanted to say one I'm, thing though that that yeah. I discovered. I tried to use it in bed responsively for uh, a YouTube, when the the code from YouTube, uh -huh. and it it got it got rid the the URL said undefined, so I had to oh, no. copy it back into that into the what in bed responsively gave me. I had to add the my the original URL. It corrupted it. It it so so okay. It, it's not perfect. Okay. Yeah. So it, it, yeah, it might not be as reliable as we were first expecting. Um, you may also try like how Maddie brought up the 100% for the width. Uh, if that's what you were just trying to tackle was the width. Um, you can use percentages instead of uh, static numbers for the pixels. Yeah, I, I, I did try using that and I got into uh some weird stuff happening. I, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> it, it was hundred it, and I never got it the right size. I finally just did it in a different way. And hmm. uh, I, 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 I did play with that, but uh, okay. Anyway, uh, thank you. I'm sorry I had to leave, but I was donating my car. No worries. <laughs> no worries. Um, no, that is a, a good warning for all. Um, embed responsibly can be helpful, but it can be one of those tools that might might be a little troublesome. Um, okay, Lynette, thanks. yeah, thanks. Yeah, I have a quick thanks. question. I just want to kind of survey the group. Um, when you want to share documents digitally with uh, with uh, your board members and things, do uh, do you guys use Dropbox or do you recommend using a Google Drive to do that? <laughs> We use Google Drive. And do you and do you have a Google business account or do you just do that by setting I didn't it up? I, I didn't set it up. I don't think it's a business account though. Okay. Okay. Maybe somebody else has an answer. We yeah, use we use we use Google Drive in Edwardsville too. And we just set up a Google account. It's not business, it's just a Google account, Edwardsville Art Edwardsville Area League. And that's where everybody goes into all the board. Okay, okay. And so you just give the, the board members have the one password and the one um, uh, email address and there's no security issues with that or with so many different IPs um, getting into the account? Uh, the only thing that happens is that I set it up. So whenever somebody new goes in, I get a notification saying somebody new goes in. Okay. I'm, I'm normally expecting it because we have a new board member and then I know that they went in. So I don't, it's not, Nobody, nobody has tried to hack us, but you know, I guess that could happen. Okay, all right. I was just about to set that up for our for our board and and just um, wanted to pull the group, see what you were doing. And Amaris, if you have a recommendation, that would be great. Um, I think it really does just depend on the 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 size and and you know what your league is doing. Um, I think that the Google Drive option is um, a good one. As far as security issues, I think that it might be the same, you know, with any option, whether it was paid or not. Um, and you could you could help, you know, lower the risk by just periodically changing the password, um, maybe oh, okay. even more often than just change over. Um, you could just do that every so often. Okay. I okay. think I think though that we haven't used our individual passwords for Google. I 
and we had the permissions are set up so we mm -hmm. can yeah that's another way of doing it right is yeah. what and what is that now we we have our own individual google accounts and we use that to sign on and the permissions are sent so set so that we can access them oh so yeah. there isn't a sharing of of a master no, password no, or master account no, no. And you're logging into, so you're logging into your individual Gmail accounts to access what the the Google shared Google Drive, the oh, Google okay. Drive. Okay. The doc the document stored on the Google Drive for the right. right. Okay, that's awesome. I did not know that myself that that you can allow. So it sounds like you have the league account using using that for the Google Drive, and then each person's personal Gmail account is used to sign in. And all have access to that league's Google Drive. Right. Oh, and whoever sets yeah. it up can set it up so that other people can either update it or only read it. Ah. So you can set up different delegate. roles. Yeah, you can you can delegate permission to the people that you share with. Nice. Okay. And this this huh. we were even considering the issue of uh, for succession that we keep track. Uh, have more than one person who has access to the important things we use in our business. So we're we're have a we're going to have a spreadsheet that has information that you wouldn't want anybody else to get a hold of. So we've heard from people that you can you can manage the security on something like that. We haven't we haven't decided to use it, but they claim that you you can. For a spreadsheet, you're you're saying? Yeah, it probably it's a spreadsheet. Yeah, but it it has the well, we're in, in we're in the process of doing this, so I I don't know the final solution, but we want to be able to have a place where the usernames and passwords are stored right. for the critical activities because if somebody drops dead, <laughs> you know, you don't want your activity to stop locked so, away yeah definitely i mean the other people must have or maybe should think about what to do about this that's yeah that's another another thing if anybody has any um anything that you're currently doing for password management i will say uh, us at the state league for california we do subscribe to LastPass. that's something we recently did a few months ago um, no, I I was pushing for LastPass or one password because everybody mm -hmm. can access it with their own password. And yeah, then... it's it's pretty nice because we did we I will say we did operate with a spreadsheet for a very long time, um, and it worked for us. It I don't think we ever had an issue of oh gosh it got to the wrong hands or anything. Um, we would have it stored like in our Dropbox and and access it whenever we needed. Um, but yeah, it's 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 a best practice, I guess, to use a, a system like that or a service like that rather than having it um, out in the open. But Liz, your your um, idea to make the spreadsheet more secure, that's great. You can add like a, a password or something because then at least you have a level of security there. Yeah. What was that? Last pass? Last pass, yeah, that's what we use. L A S T P A S S. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, thank you. Yeah, awesome. I love to hear the the discussions amongst leagues because we are all doing the same thing. So it's nice to hear. Well, this is what we're doing. Well, this is how we're yeah. doing it. A bit different. Yeah, it's very helpful to hear about other people's solutions. Definitely. Yeah, this is an amazing brain trust. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you all very much. This yeah, thank you. Question. Yeah, thank you. Same. Thank you all for for joining. Two and two weeks. Yes.